start hey, shooting I, your bows and arrows at me. You, uh, uh, I think it was, I forgot which player it was, but um, said that with this game this week, it's like a statement game, right? Uh, and like, I'm sure as a coach, they, they you never want to put too much, you know, on any every game. every game is it's hard to win college basketball games. You go one at a time. That's been our philosophy. Obviously, when you're playing a a program uh, that's kind of been the standard of college basketball for the last ten years, it's you know you naturally human nature. It's 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 more more eyes on it, more of those types of things. But we approach it, uh, you know, one game at a time. Great opportunity. I keep telling them, I'm like, you know, you guys probably think it's corny, you know, but every 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 game you have, you have an opportunity, and it's just it's a it's a great program on the road. Um, be be a lot of fun. And uh, you know, but you've been here for a while now. Um, do you have a sense at like how much this game means to like the fans? Yeah, you know, uh, coming here, I uh, realized uh, Washington State, the Oregon's, uh, Gonzaga game, all these things. You know, it's in state. There's a lot of in state pride. It always is. There's always great in state players in all the programs and. Uh, you know, we hope to represent ourselves, you know, the best ability, you know, and uh, fans love it. Um, and uh, it's always exciting. Is there a sense that maybe um, this year uh, that Gonzaga is a little vulnerable? I mean, at six and three? I don't think so. They played the hardest schedule in the country. Uh, they've traveled all over the place. It's kind of been their motto from the beginning. It's one of the things that I respect about them so much. Uh, willing to play any place, anytime, anywhere, and uh, they're always really good. They got the best player in the uh, in the country, in my opinion, the last two years. And Drew Timmy, um, they got a local kid, Nolan Hickman, who's as good of a guard out there. Julian Strother, they're loaded, uh, um, and so uh, and they got a great home court. Be it's great, special place to play college basketball, and those are all these just fun places to play and great opportunities. Can you stop Drew Timmy, or you just have to kind of accept he's going to get his and? He's so good, uh, you know. I don't know what we're gonna do. You know, he's uh, they got they're they can really score. They always have. Um, they've they've got multiple guys that have had big numbers, um, and uh, but he is. I mean, I, I've seen him score. You know, 20 straight points. Uh, that's his ability in the NCAA tournament last year. I think it was the Memphis game where he just took over the game. The end of the Michigan State game. The end of the game last night against Kent State. He's just. He's a guy that uh, is going to go down as one of the greatest college basketball players of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, is he um, <coughs> uniquely skilled to beat the zone because he's a big man that can shoot? Yeah, I've seen him um, destroy man to man. I've seen him destroy double teams. I've seen him destroy single teams. I've seen him destroy, uh, in, you know, with his handle in the press. Uh, um, People talk, you know, defensively. He's made a couple of huge plays defensively to win games at the end. Um, he's kind of, a, you know, he's he just does it all. Another adjustment for you. You got to, you had to play without Frank. Mm -hmm. You know, guys are still getting used to each other now. You got used to not playing with Frank. And I know that Braxton, you know, probably wasn't a hundred percent. But you know, when you go back and look at the film from Colorado, what did you see that you liked? I love that he was he was obviously playing uh, uh, not a hundred percent and I was excited that he was able to impact the game uh, he's a he's a big physical um, uh, player who's athletic and finished to look like you know once you get in that game your adrenaline's going a little bit it probably changes a little bit but seeing him healthy seeing him moving those types of things are what I was so excited about because uh, that's what we need. And we need to keep him out of foul trouble. So, uh, you know, having that fourth one. But he, he, I thought he moved really well. He's making his foul shots. He's finishing around the basket. Um, he's, he's a really important part of what we're doing. You were a guy who fouled a lot when you uh, I was a hack, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when they told you you got to not foul, is it possible or is that even get more? I think, you know, I, you know, um, they had replacements for me, you know, in the sense of like there was a, you know, and, and so like Braxton, he's such a good offensive player for us and gives us that rim run. Um, you know, Jackson's still, you know, now coming off red shirt, it's going to be more of a, a building process, but he's got a lot of skill too. Um, but, uh, you know, you just got to, you got to do it a little bit smarter. Even if I had to do it again, I would have been really physical, but 
Uh, but you got to play smarter. You know, you can't go for pump fakes. Got to stay down. All those different things matter. Um, but not don't get away from who you are. You know, which is an aggressive, physical, um, big man. Hey, um, um, obviously, with this team, they love to score. Um, they, they average like 80, 80 points. But they've been held to you know some low scoring games here. So, do you think that this is going to be one of those games where you try to keep them? You know. Or do you just kind of go with them and try to make some shots? You know, we're going to have to go. Uh, you know, they're they're great in transition. It's you know traditionally they've always been really really good. They score are so many ways. And you know, there's one thing about saying okay, we're going to take this away, and then being able to go out there and execute it and do it. Uh, there's there's two different things. So I think when you watch a lot of these games that have that have worked against them, uh, you know, they, you got to be able to execute it. And then on top of it, you know, they don't get a lot of publicity for their defense. You know, obviously they don't have that seven-footer in there uh, blocking shots at the rim, which solves a lot of issues. But they're still really talented defensively. I mean, they had a couple 30, 40-point wins early, um, you know, where they just get up in you. They've got some athletes, you know, Bolton, Salas. Uh, they, they come after you. So they've got a lot of different weapons and a lot of different ways that they can win. Big Frank. I think that from what I've seen, it's not only his presence on the court, but his presence off the court. You know, he almost seemed like, you know, the blood and guts of the team. So going forward with him not being able to play, do you still travel him? And, you know, what's he doing with the team right now? PLF, play like Frank. You know, play really <laughs> selfless and really hard uh, with a passion. And that's our tougher together. And he represents that. If there was a player that represents it, that's him. And, uh, you know, he's just uh, gives us great energy. He's a great leader. Um, the people, you know, our players respect him. And uh, when the leadership's coming from your locker room, it's a lot better than when it's coming from the coaches. Uh, and, and he's been huge for us. And since his injury, how's that leadership, how's it showed? Oh, uh, gosh, you just – people respond to him. You know, before we played in the game, you know, we haven't been great in the morning. Um, and, uh, you know, he came in and woke everybody up pretty quick. I didn't have to say any words in the pregame. It was just really, you know, um, uh, you know when, when he talks, not only people listen like the old EF Hutton commercial, but he, he does it with an authenticity and a spirit that's pretty cool. Also, I don't know if you want to talk about it or not, but his mom – Mm -hmm. never been in this country. How big is it for Frank to have his mom here? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, it's, it's like in life. Whenever you go through tough times, you always kind of, where's mom? Uh, where's my family? Uh, and I think, you know, I love the fact that she's able to be here, not only to, to be around Frank, but to also see the Washington family and uh, the impact and the friends and the people that are, are here on a day-to-day -day basis trying to get Frank healthy again and the love and the support. I mean, we've got some of the best, Pat Jenkins, Dr. Dresner. We've got an incredible uh, staff, our trainers, nutritionists, Maria. They just do an unbelievable job. Bobby Medina being there for them, good, bad, indifferent, help growing these guys. And I'm, I'm, it's fun for me that when she, does, when she leaves, she'll know that he's in great hands and that he has another family around him that's going to support him and love him and be there for him and help him recover from this better. I know he wants to focus on robotics. Has he talked about building you a robot or anything like that yet? Yeah, yeah, robotic hair. I think if he can like grow it this way and like back here, it'll be really good. And I, he, you know, he's he's the type of kid. You know, I say I keep saying kid, uh, man, young man who um, everything that he approaches, he he attacks it with a 120 uh, percent. Never, you know, always moving forward, never get discouraged type of, of mindset. And so that kid will be able to accomplish anything. If it's robotics, you know, those commercials that you see the, on the Sam Adams commercials where they jump, you know, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be building those. Hey, uh, th this will be your fourth game against them. In those first three games, anything jump out? Like I remember 2018, that one was right there. And it, it was like a play or two. You know, you you just you know when you play a team like that, you can't play a, a perfect game, but you got You got to have your A game. You know, they 
They can hurt you so many different ways. You know, we've put ourselves in position the last couple times to be, you know, you never know, a plus shot here, a play there. Um, that's what usually it comes down to. Um, but, uh, you know, just having the game back is a lot of fun. It's great for the fans. I know the last two years they've missed it. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll go out and do, give it our best shot. Uh, you uh, talked about, um, you know, the kiddo and that place. I'm saying like 69 straight games there. Uh, you know, that, that like they've won is the longest, you know. Um, what is it about that place that makes it so good? Well, they've had they've had success, and so what happens is is the student body really backs it, and it always is like when our place is one of the toughest places to play play in America, and uh, when you have your, your it's all based on your students, you know, when your students are in there rocking, uh, it becomes like a, a a party per se, an extension, and uh, they've got. Uh, a lot of support. Their students come out. Um, they have those fun things about, you know, posters and different things about players. They do their homework. They take pride in it. And uh, it's 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 always fun for the players. And, you know, home court, not home court, it's just those experiences you'll always remember. And so I know the last time that we played there, it was just, it was a really, really cool place to play. And I'm sure it will be packed and rocking on, on Friday, which will be a lot of fun. If you had to take this place out of it, um, and you like had to write like the best from home court at, at, or places to like play, including here. Yeah, I don't know in terms of order, but they've it's definitely one of them. I've heard San Diego State's amazing. I've never seen it on TV. I've watched it. Uh, you know, there's so many places. Arizona's good. Utah's good. You know, there's so many good places to play, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, man. It's always fun. You know what? Yeah, Duke. Uh, when, when we played at Duke, a uh, small, intimate. Uh, you know, on top of you a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, but you know, it's the, the students. They're they're juiced up and having fun, and they've got signs. They've done their homework, and it, it starts when you're shooting baskets in layup lines. You know, it's it's not like just when the game starts. It's the it's the process. Your two freshman guards, growing pains aren't easy going from high school. College, mm. to college classes, to being away from home, college practice, and they get a little bit of playing time, and then all of a sudden the other team has a scout on them, and it's another adjustment. Can Changes. You talk about, you know, just that difficulty as a freshman and how each one of those are treating those. I had a, a really close friend of mine who I worked with at Syracuse named Lewis Orr, who played in the NBA, and um, it was my first couple years coaching, and he used to say, Hop, he's like, uh, you know, the, the, the game is always changing. And the scouting report, you know, other teams are working, they're watching, they're adjusting, uh, and you have to adapt and adjust and be proactive. And, you know, you, you look at Keon Minifield the first couple of games having 20, and, he, you know, you know they, they don't have him on it now. He's, he's on there, and uh, Corin Johnson didn't play, and he comes out and plays. And you constantly always have to, to keep – Keep building, keep growing, keep learning. You know, um, always, always be learning, always be, and try to be one step ahead. And uh, our coaches do a great job with our player development part of it. But that's where I think you, everybody's like, why isn't Cam Minifield scoring 20 a game? You know, the game changes, and it's a team game. And uh, but 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 when he's on and he's he's going through it, he's he's helped us already, and he'll keep helping us this year. Do you think a little bit of what he's going through now is because now he is on the scouting report? I think that for all these guys, I think they are. You know, you know, it, it, it's as simple as you know, their team's designed to take away this and this, and and this guy starts to play good. And the next game, they might defend the ball screen a little bit different. They might blitz it. It's it's a part of the growing process, and you have to be prepared for that. And Braxton as well. I think so. I think so. With big guys, it's all about getting and creating good position, and then for them, it's going to be the double team. And so, can they can they play out of that double team and? Coach Jones works with them on that on daily of, of uh, you know, doing that. But get an early position. Sometimes you don't even need a move. You can just pivot and, and score. And defense seems to be playing real well right now. You got, are, you, are you happy with the way the defense is playing right yeah, now? Yeah, I think there's, you know, every game, the, 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 the zone evolves based on how teams try to attack you. And then you have the foundation and the rules. And so can you execute a scatter report out of it? And when you have a team that's, that has a lot of reps and they've had a lot of time seeing those types of things, that's when you have your best teams. You know, uh, 
talk about Matisse and them the second year, uh, really, really being able to adapt and uh, shut people's waters off. Um, and, uh, you know, this team, I, I, I like it a lot. I think there's a, still a lot of growth. There's still a lot of breakdown. There's still a lot of learning. We're fouling a little bit too much. We've got to do a better job of, of not putting, you know, where teams are getting more foul shots than we do. That, that can't be. That can't be. Um, and so um, that's an area that we're, we're really going to focus on and get better at. I love him, and I, and I also think that he is still learning and still growing, and that chemistry is real. But I do see him just getting better and better. I see him more confident as the, as the games go. And that's going to be cool to see. You know, you see him Braxton, the confidence, Corin, the confidence. Uh, Minifield knows it, uh, that he has it. Uh, P.J. Fuller has made some big plays. Um, just keep our Jamal Bay uh, in this last game. We didn't talk a lot about him. Five steals. I think he had zero turnovers. Uh, you know, offensively, he's been shooting the ball. Cole Badgema has been a, a most improved player. And, and then we just need to keep building each other. Everybody needs to get a little bit better, and we need to do it together. And uh, uh, that's we're going to do that. You know, in like these types of games when they, like you have this type of opponent, do you feel that like you may have to lean more on one Keon than, than like one because he's kind of been in these kind of big types of games? You know, I think, you know, if you look at the St. Mary's game, which was a high-level game, you know, P.J. made some big plays down the stretch. Keon Brooks made some big plays down the stretch. And overtime, Braxton had the block and, the, and two offensive rebounds. Uh, uh, Corin Johnson, you couldn't take him out of the game. Uh, we went small and we got a trap, and Keon Minifield got the steal. Uh, you know, we have the type of team where we can get that, I think, from a lot of different places. Um, and having that ability and having that balance, I thought in the last ten we had a couple of guys with 14, 16, 12, two with eight. That balance is what's going to make us really good going, you know, further, uh, especially when we hit the league. When you haven't beaten a team in a long time, uh, what is the first battle? Do you first have to maybe convince your team that they can win before they actually do win? Yeah, I think, you know, in anything that you do, you got to have a plan. This is how we're going to win. And then you got to be able to go execute it. And then they've got to believe. You know, I think our defense is getting better. We still have droughts scoring the ball. Um, and uh, that's where, you know, we're going to put an emphasis uh, getting better. That's just that chemistry and repetition and those types of things. But, uh, you know, when you play a, a team, a, a caliber of, of Gonzaga or St. Mary's or we're going to play Auburn, you know, you, you play these teams, um, you know, they, they, they watch television, they watch it, and they know it's a great opportunity. So you know, you know the effort and the energy are going to be there. You know, that's a good question, Percy. That's a good question. I don't know. I think we might have renegotiated after because we didn't play in the last yeah, two years. Yeah, so right. start of a four year and we start there. So I think I, 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 I'm I, not certain, but I'm, I'm close. But will they be on the calendar for next year? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I think so that. Like I think. I, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And like just to that right there, because there was a time when this series was off again. Yeah. Like, I just think, like, you know, when you when you talk about a program of that caliber, it's just like, you know, when you play Washington State or you play these teams, they're just they're great to have in-state. Seattle U, uh, there's so many good teams. Eastern Washington, you know, it's always great when you have in-state, you know, uh, you know games. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's good for everybody. After the Colorado game, are you expecting to see some backcourt pressure and a lot of zone defense? Gosh, I don't, you know, uh, they, they, they play their little 1-2-2, two, two, uh, which has been really aggressive. It hurt us uh, two years ago. Um, you know, it's got to get better. We made some, we made some plays. But I, I really, I looked at it. We needed these days off. We needed, we needed to recharge our batteries. Uh, we needed uh, uh, to get healthy, those types of things. Um, so... Uh, you you got to expect everything, and you know you always go back and you play that game, and you go back and you just say, okay, we got to get better here, we got to get better here, we got to get better here. If I was Team B, this is what they would do against us. If I watched that game, let's get better here, let's get these guys prepared. That's what coaching is, and so we'll be prepared. 
And then it just goes back to your players have to execute. It's a player's game. You give them the schematic. You make foul shots or you don't. Uh, you know, you have good traps or you don't. Uh, you take away three-pointer shooters or you don't. Um, you rebound or you don't. Um, uh, but it's going to be a really exciting. There was talk a few years ago that Mark Few didn't want anything to do with it. It's about having the Washington Gonzaga game every year in Seattle. And yeah, yeah. A climate pledge. yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you, would, you be up, would you be up for that? You know what? You, you lose. It's a great game because you have this big environment and everybody, but it's so fun when you play in, in intimate home courts. There's something that to be said for that. I love Climate Pledge. I think it's an unbelievable venue. Uh, boy, I went there. I didn't wait in one line. I went to it. was awesome. It was like one of the greatest experiences. Uh, but I think those home home games, uh, being in Heckad, the history, and then going to uh, the kennel, those are just those are things that you're never – you know, those are just great and cool opportunities. Good, thank you guys. Thank 18 you. minutes. How about that? You got your, you got it right go, right. dogs, everybody. Let's go.